Good morning. My name is Nicholas Marcus Thompson, and I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Black Class Action Secretariat, which is part of a coalition of human rights organizations that includes the Public Service Alliance of Canada, the National Union of Public and General Employees, the, Na the Canadian Black Nurses Alliance, the Enchanty Network, the Red Coalition, the Federation of Black Canadians, and the Canadian Association of Professional Employees. We're here today to provide a complaint that we launched back in February. Joining me today is Nathan Pryor, President of the Canadian Association of Professional Employees, and Bernadette Betchy, a courageous employee of the Canadian Human Rights Commission, who is here with us to share her story. Thank you for being here with us today. Canada has long been seen as home to many nations, a champion of diversity and a global leader of human rights. But our country is at risk of having that reputation irreparably damaged, with its human rights status now being examined by a United Nations oversight body. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights Subcommittee on Accreditation has concluded that there is sufficient evidence to place Canada under special review because of findings of systemic anti-black discrimination at the Canadian Human Rights Commission. It is concerned about Canada's, <coughs> about the institution, it is concerned about the institution's ability to comply with international human rights laws. This decision is unprecedented. Canada's human, human rights record has never been investigated by the United Nations in more than 30 years that it has been a member state. This now puts us among the ranks of nations like Russia, Iraq, and Venezuela, who have faced a special review. If Canada's A status is downgraded to B, it will lose speaking rights at the United Nations Human Rights Council, as well as voting rights and governance positions, not to mention the humiliation we will experience on the international stage. It is important to note that the evidence submitted that led to this decision came directly from two federal institutions, the Treasury Board of Canada Secretariat and the Senate Human Rights Committee, which both concluded that the Canadian Human Rights Commission not only discriminated against Canadians seeking justice by dismissing complaints of racism, but also discriminated against their own employees. Let us be clear, these are not allegations. These are findings and conclusions by multiple federal institutions. It was these two reports that established enough grounds to re-examine Canada's international human rights standings. The Canadian government has acknowledged that anti-black racism have persisted and yet the government has failed to take concrete and tangible steps to address the issues, but they will tell you that they have. On Saturday afternoon, the day after the UN investigation was announced, the Liberal government released its anti-racism strategy for 2024 to 2028, highlighting a $110.4 million investment. But upon closer inspection, you can see that it is merely a repackaging of old funding and old commitments from 2022 and 2023. This is a clear attempt to distract from the embarrassment of this international investigation. The Liberals' five-year strategy does not mention anything about creating uh, improvements at the Canadian Human Rights Commission and the harms that they have perpetuated. By the government's own admission, to its staff and the Canadian public. As a matter of fact, the government has cut critical funding for the Commission, leaving it with no choice but to cut programs. For far too long, the Canadian government has been in charge of investigating itself. How can it be those who have perpetrated these harms are then tasked with implementing the solutions? The result is a government that continues to serve platitudes promises, reviews, and reports without any actual concrete change. 
There is no accountability when they don't meet their own commitments. And, and all the while, Canadians continue to suffer. So with this review underway, we're calling for a number of recommendations, many of which the government has agreed with in theory, but have not taken steps to implement. Along the themes of justice, recognition, and development, we're calling on the following. First, we call on the Minister of Justice and Attorney General Arif Farani to begin the process to create a properly funded direct access model to the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal. This would remove the Canadian Human Rights Commission as a gatekeeper with the power to dismiss claims before they reach the tribunal, transitioning them into a supportive role to help Canadians navigate the process. This is not just our recommendation. A direct access model was recommended in the Senate Human Rights Committee's report, and even the Laforest report 24 years ago. Since then, government after government have failed to implement that recommendation. Secondly, we call on the Minister of Labour, Seamus O'Regan, to expedite the amendments they have committed to making to the Employment Equity Act in particular, designating black people as an employment equity group due to the historic exclusion of black people from employment opportunities. Thirdly, we call on the Minister of Diversity, Inclusion and Persons with Disabilities, Kamal Kira, to take steps to create a black equity commission as an independent office of parliament, as also recommended by the Senate Human Rights Committee. We must recognize that black Canadians face unique challenges. They often experience some of the harshest forms of systemic discrimination, and yet are often the last to benefit from broad diversity initiatives. This office must have the powers to police the Canadian Public Service, as well as the Canadian Human Rights Commission, and all levels of government to hold it accountable, find solutions, and report to the Parliament. We have requested meetings with these three ministers and we await their response. So with this international review, the Canadian government is now on notice. It cannot claim to be a global leader in human rights while discriminating against its own right here at home. It must take real steps to implement change that it has already promised and it must happen with black stakeholders at the table, not just as consultants, but actually in the decision-making roles to ensure that the recommendations are expeditiously implemented. I would now like to call on Nathan Pryor from the Canadian Association of Public Employees, who will be followed by Bernadette Betchy, a current employee of the Canadian Human Rights Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. My name is Nathan Pryor, President of the Canadian Association of Professional Employees. Je vais passer en français. L'Association canadienne des employés professionnels est ici aujourd'hui pour saluer l'examen de la Commission canadienne des droits de la personne, la CCDP, par l'Alliance mondiale des institutions nationales des droits de l'homme afin de déterminer sa conformité avec le droit international en matière de droits de la personne, en particulier les principes de Paris. Après avoir examiné les enquêtes menées par des tiers sur l'Organisme canadien de surveillance des droits de la personne en tant qu'employeur. I'll pass back to English. So, in March 2023, the Treasury Board Secretariat found that there was discrimination and systemic racism at the Canadian Human Rights Commission. In a decision issued on a policy grievance that was filed in November 2020 by us, CAPE, and similarly by the Association of Justice Council and the Public Service Alliance of Canada that pointed to discrimination against their black and racialized employees. And the Senate Standing Committee on Human Rights, um, they made a report on anti-black racism at the CHRC, which they produced just in December 2023, which was even more damning and confirmed what we already knew. So while the Treasury Board invited all the parties uh, to participate in mediation to seek a meaningful resolution, we're not at all satisfied with the non-systemic approach to the problems that we're seeing at the CHRC. Systemic solutions are needed to uproot for good the systemic issues of racial discrimination that persist at Canada's Human Rights Office. And that's how we found ourselves where we are today. 
where Canada's human rights status is now seriously threatened. So organizations such as the CHRC, which are fighting for the advancement of human rights and for social justice, should be held to a much higher standard of accountability and integrity for obvious reasons. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but instead, we found our ourselves in a place where that office is one of the main targets of a historic class action lawsuit and is now under international investigation. And so this is shocking. By failing their black and racialized employees, including our members, the CHRC not only betrayed their fundamental principles, but also perpetuated the very injustices that they claim to oppose, undermining their credibility and the world's trust. And this isn't just high-level moralizing. We're talking about real harm to real people that's been going on for decades and that could have been prevented. And so we're hoping that this review will compel the CHRC to change its policies and procedures and to take the clear action steps needed that Nicholas spoke to before. Black public employees and Canadians more generally are done with this government throwing up smoke and mirrors, making a lot of noise about listening. And we're starting to see real consequences here to their foot dragging. And Canada's reputation is now taking a big hit. And this was entirely avoidable, and time is now running out. And I'll now introduce Bernadette Betchy, who's a CAPE member and is a current employee at the CHRC. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> Bonjour. Je m'appelle Bernadette Betchy. Je suis une femme noire, immigrante sur cette terre d'adoption qui est le Canada. Une mère, une épouse, une fille, une sœur, une amie, une citoyenne canadienne qui est arrivée ici au Canada un 1er janvier. Il y a maintenant de cela 33 hivers lors d'une tempête de neige dans un Québec froid et blanc. My name is Bernadette Betchy. I'm a black woman, an immigrant on this land, a mother, a wife, a daughter, a sister, a friend, and a Canadian citizen. My family and I arrived in this country on a cold January 1st, 33 winters ago, during a snowstorm, the cold and white Quebec City. Je suis bachelière en communication, je détiens une maîtrise en études féministes et je suis actuellement doctorante en philosophie féministe et études des genres à l'Université d'Ottawa. Je parle couramment et j'écris le français, l'anglais et l'espagnol. Je suis une femme engagée dans ma communauté locale et internationale. Je suis une citoyenne à part entière qui fait de ce Canada un endroit bon pour y vivre. Leaving our country, Cameroon, my parents dreamed of a better future for my sister, my brothers, and I. Imagine leaving your family, your friends, your comfort, your landmarks, everything you know, to try and offer a better future for your children, hoping they don't have to start over in the same place you started. Aujourd'hui, je prends la parole, non seulement en mon nom, mais aussi pour une communauté entière, Entendez ma voix, celle de nombreuses personnes qui, chacune à leur manière, vivent une réalité semblable à la mienne et au sein de la Commission et dans la fonction publique du Canada. Je suis une employée de, à la Commission, je suis employée à la Commission canadienne des droits de la personne depuis le 3 octobre 2019. Mon expérience de racisme au travail n'est pas un cas isolé. Elle est le reflet d'une douleur partagée par beaucoup d'entre nous. Une douleur qui résonne profondément et se manifeste de manière unique pour chacun. Chaque jour, nous nous heurtons à des préjugés, des discriminations et des microagressions qui sapent notre confiance et minent notre dignité. Nous sommes, de nombreux, nous sommes nombreux à ressentir l'épuisement émotionnel que cela engendre. J'ai récemment épuisé tous mes congés de maladie pour me donner une chance psychologique de pouvoir m'en sortir pour ma famille et moi. Chaque jour, nous, nous nous heurtons à un système au sein de la Commission qui perpétue une injustice systémique, empêchant les Canadiens noirs de recevoir justice pour leurs plaintes. Les barrières bureaucratiques et les préjugés institutionnels que nous rencontrons rendent difficile, voire impossible, l'accès à une véritable équité. Ces obstacles institutionnels ne sont pas seulement des incidents isolés, mais font partie d'un schéma plus vaste qui maintient les Canadiens noirs dans une position d'injustice constante. I rose today to make, a, to make a collective cry. I'm speaking not just for myself. 
I'm speaking for the collective, the black and racialized employees, my colleagues at the CHRC, and Canadians ac across the country who have experienced discrimination at the hands of the Commission. We demand change. We call for concrete action to dismantle the systems of discrimination that oppress us. We want inclusive, equitable workplaces where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. In my five years at this, at, as an employee at the CHRC, I dealt with a demotion from my role at the, at the Prime Minister's office to my junior role at the CHRC, being overlooked for promotions and asked to compete for positions when my coworkers were, were offered opportunities, witnessing a disproportionate amount of denial for grievances made by Canadians on the grounds of racial discrimination, specifically anti-black racism. I went on sick leave many times in an attempt to remain psychologically, psychologically sound. In some occasions, in one occasion, to protect myself as I was pregnant with my son and knew the stress was affecting my pregnancy. Je sais que je, je sais que je ne suis pas seule. Malheureusement, plusieurs ont peur de parler par peur de représailles. I know I'm not alone, but many are scared to speak. The impact of experiences of racism is not limited to our professional lives. They profoundly affect our mental and emotional well-being. On the mental level, being constantly exposed to racist attitude in a hostile work environment leads to, a, to chronic stress and deterioration of mental health. Daily microaggressions, derogatory remarks, and unfair treatment exhaust emotionally. This constant pressure can lead to anxiety disorders, depression, and a sense of isolation. Individuals often find themselves in a state of constant vigilance, watching for the next discriminatory act, which erodes their self-confidence and ability to concentrate and perform at work. The financial impact of these toxic environments um, is also significant. Discrimination, discrimination and systemic racism limit opportunities for advancement, promotion, or salary increases. Black employees like myself may find themselves trapped in positions below their skills and potential. This professional stagnation translates into lower wages and less financial security, making it difficult to achieve economic stability. This systemic issue also, also stifles our professional growth and opportunities. The glass ceilings we encounter are not just metaphorical, but very real barriers that limit our advancement and potential. We are often overlooked for promotion, sidelined in important project, and denied the recognition we deserve. It is ironic and disheartening that the institution we work for is uh, we work for is meant to um, is meant to help Canadians seek justice. Now we are asking for justice, and the government refuses to give it to us. We have spent many years fighting, but institutions are not listening. In fact, raising the alarm has been a professional suicide for myself. It has put a target on my back not just at the CHRC, but across the public service and beyond, where I have now been turned down for multiple jobs. This signals to, uh, this signals to me that this institution knows they can continue to act with impunity and there will be no recourse. This is why we're welcoming this review by an international body in the hopes that the government will finally take this issue seriously. A year ago, when appearing before the Senate of Canada for the study on anti-black racism and discrimination, sexism and discrimination, I received a public apology from the Chief Commissioner at the CHRC. One year later, things are worse than ever for me. Nothing has really changed, and I'm currently sit still sitting in the same level and category I came in five years ago. We are tired of empty promise, performative apologies, and the government's failure to act 
on their own recommendations. As a mother, I strive to be a source of strength and inspiration for my children, for our children, teaching them to embrace their identity with pride. I want them to grow up in a global society that values their worth and sees their potential. Just like my parents, the idea of a better world for our children is what keeps me fighting. So they too don't have to start where their parents started. En tant que mère, je m'efforce d'être une source de force et d'inspiration pour mes enfants, pour nos enfants, en leur apprenant à embrasser leur identité avec fierté. Je veux qu'ils grandissent dans une société globale qui valorise leurs valeurs et voit leur potentiel. Tout comme mes parents, lorsqu'ils ont tout laissé derrière pour venir s'installer ici au Canada. L'idée d'un monde meilleur pour nos enfants est ce qui me pousse à me battre. Pour qu'ils et elles n'aient pas à commencer là où nous aurons commencé. Ubuntu. I am because we are. Je suis parce que nous sommes. Akiba. Merci. Thank you very much, uh, Bernadette, uh, for your courage in sharing your story. Uh, that we know many, many Canadians are also experiencing. I'd now like to take this opportunity to invite Canadians who have experienced discrimination at the hands of the Canadian Human Rights Commission to uh, contact us um, so that we can uh, submit their experiences as part of this review. The review will take place uh, in the fall of uh, this year, uh, following which they will provide uh, their findings uh, on. Uh, at this concludes our press conference. Um, I would now open the floor to any questions that you may have. How binding is this, David Thornton, CBC News, how binding is this review? Does anything change, or is the Commission compelled to change anything if the status is downgraded? If the status is downgraded, Canada as a human rights leader will, uh, if it doesn't take steps, it will not be able to sit and to participate in the international community on critical human rights issues. Um, and that in itself should be a deterrent to act. Having no voice on the international community uh, is, is damning to this country and its uh, global reputation. So when you say the international community, that's very broad. Like, what, does, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, the Human Rights Council has uh, over uh, a hundred member states that participate uh, in that UN mechanism. Uh, the United Nations is the global body recognized um, that has uh, a very large membership of countries around the world. It is the international standard for uh, global governance. So to have Canada not have a voice there, and uh, especially on the Human Rights Council, to be able to, uh, you know, not have a voice there, uh, it uh, it would be a disaster for for this country. En français. Le Canada en ce moment a un statut A, et la la révision pourrait changer le statut. Je me demandais quelle est la vraie valeur de cette révision-là quand on regarde d'autres pays qui ont un statut de A en termes de droits de la personne. Euh, Haïti, l'Afrique du Sud, l'Inde, l'Irak ont tous un statut de A. En quoi une valeur, quelle valeur ça aurait que le Canada serait amené à B avec d'autres pays comme la Suède? Oui. On peut dire que le dommage est à la réputation. Si, dans, si nous, nous sommes en dessous de l'Irak dans la, la classification euh, des, euh, des statuts de la droit de la personne, ça, c'est incroyable. Ça, c'est Canada qui va être en dessous de, des autres pays qui ont euh, beaucoup, euh, une beaucoup pire réputation mondialement. Um, on dirait aussi qu'en tant qu'employeur, comme le CGA, c'est pas juste Canada, c'est le... 
commission comme employeur à laquelle nous parlons, moi je parle euh, comme euh, une chef de syndicat, envers l'employeur. Si notre, notre commission qui euh, va faire des enquêtes sur les droits de la personne ici au Canada a une statue qui est diminuée en tant que ça, ça, ça va diminuer la réputation et la crédibilité des enquêtes qu'ils font. Donc si le Canada est, est certain, si notre gouvernement fédéral est certain qu'il soutient les droits de la personne, Uh, C'est le temps d'appuyer les changements à laquelle Ni Nicolas a proposé et de renouveler la réputation du Canada qui est en, en chute tout à l'heure. Merci. Ça donne l'impression, en attaquant le Canada sur cet enjeu-là des droits de la personne, euh, M. le dit, on, le Canada est un leader historiquement, euh, ça donne l'impression que vous estimez que le Canada n'est pas un leader et devrait et que vous croyez que la situation du Canada est pire que celle qu'on trouve en Irak, Haïti, en Afrique du Sud, qu'est-ce que vous répondez à ça? Mais ce n'est pas moi qui vais dire ça. Ça va être la commission qui va faire l'enquête. On a fait la plainte et c'était trouvé comme, uh, comme ça avait de la valeur, comme ça, ça, ça avait de, de, um, assez uh, de base pour le soutenir. Donc, ce n'est pas nous autres qui disent qu'il y a une, une, uh, une plainte ici qui n'a uh, juste aucune valeur. C'est comme la valeur était était déterminé par la commission à laquelle on a fait la plainte. Et aussi, on a fait deux enquêtes indépendantes hier um, avec le Sénat et avec le secrétariat du Conseil de la Trésor qui ont trouvé les deux uh, sans, comme, sans uh, difficulté. Ils ont dit que oui, il y a de la discrimination uh, systémique à la commission. Donc, ce n'est pas nous autres qui disent ça, c'est le secrétariat du Conseil de, de la Trésor Um, c'est le Sénat et peut-être ça serait un organisme mondial là, qui va le dire, parce que si nous continuons avec une enquête faite par ce gouvernement lui-même contre leur propre agence, comme ça, on se trouve dans une situation, c'est comme quand la police va faire une enquête vers la police. On, on va voir maintenant avec un uh, organisme mondial indépendant um, les données, on va voir, mais c'est le gouvernement lui-même, dans le Sénat et dans le secrétariat, qui ont dit oui, la, la discrimination systémique se passe et on a besoin des solutions systémiques pour le résoudre. Béchi, si c'était possible de vous entendre, vous avez, vous avez porté ce combat-là, vous venez de nous le dire, euh, vous avez fait des sacrifices pour ce combat-là. Euh, qu'est-ce qui, selon vous, fait, qu'est-ce qui explique que c'est nécessaire de poser ce geste-là maintenant? Euh, M. Pryor vient de le dire, il y a eu quand même des, des organisations qui ont reconnu le, la discrimination au sein euh, de la Constitution canadienne des droits de la personne. Euh, Qu'est-ce qui fait que pour vous, c'est un, un pas nécessaire d'être où on est aujourd'hui? Euh, en fait, j'aimerais répondre à, à votre question en deux temps. Le, le premier, la première, le premier, euh, euh, en premier temps, j'aimerais euh, qu'on se concentre parfois. C'est facile de se comparer avec d'autres pays, mais c'est important aussi parfois de regarder ce qui se passe dans notre, dans notre pays même. Tout à l'heure, vous avez mentionné d'autres pays comme l'Haïti et, et la Suède et, et d'autres pays comme ça, mais c'est important de voir ce qui se passe à l'intérieur du Canada, comment le gouvernement traite, comment le gouvernement traite les Canadiens et les, 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 la population qui vit à l'intérieur de ce pays-là. Première chose. Deuxième chose, la raison pour laquelle cette, cette enquête est importante et nécessaire, c'est parce que toutes les étapes que, qui ont été menées jusqu'à maintenant n'ont rien donné. Il y a eu beaucoup de promesses, mais ça, c'est toujours en théorie. En pratique, on a toujours les, les Canadiens et Canadiennes, euh, plusieurs peuvent en témoigner. On ne voit toujours pas ces, réper ces répercussions-là dans nos vies. Alors, je crois que d'avoir un peu de pression de l'extérieur, d'avoir cette enquête de l'extérieur est plus que nécessaire parce qu'au sein même du Canada, et avec toutes les recommandations qui ont été données depuis le début, il n'y a toujours pas rien de, de, de concret qui a été donné, qui a été accompli. This was already um, answered in, in French, but can can you give me an update on the number of uh, plaintiffs uh, with within the uh, black class action lawsuit, and uh, if the um, if the number of uh, dollars that are that are being sought right now has has increased um, in the last six months? That is a, a separate matter, but I will answer your question. Um, we have, um, in that matter, um, uh, there are approximately 2,500 workers that have come forward to say that they have experienced uh, discrimination throughout the federal public service. Um, 
Right? We know the action, once it is certified, um, it will represent uh, all black workers going back to 1970. We anticipate that number to be um, uh, over 45,000. Between that past and present employees uh, during that period of time. Um, as I have reported on in the past, there has um, been discussions around the government's um, delaying or attempts to delay proceedings, and I was wondering if you have any comment on how that is on, on how that is going, if that has changed. Well, the the government of Canada um, has taken a position on this matter that is. Uh, That is very concerning. Um, we are dismayed because the government, the government's position uh, in the legal framework is saying the discrimination does not exist, while it is attempting to implement all of the solutions that we've called for. Um, in the process, continuing to harm workers um, by denying. Uh, and trying to draw out, we're in year four, trying to draw out that uh, process in uh, other legal matters of discrimination. We've had the 2SLGBTQ purge case. They settled that in one year. And that is through the entire process, consented to certification and settled it uh, in one year. By uh, the 18-month mark, it was uh, accepted in the court and completed. Uh, there are other cases with women uh, on, on pay equity on, um, and other issues of discrimination that the government has settled. But when it comes to its black employees, is dragging through the mud, through that, the liberal playbook of admitting on one side and, and, and showing platitudes uh, in the public domain and, and trying to demonstrate to the international community that they care uh, about their black employees and black Canadians. Uh, and at the, at the other side, they're trying to deny those workers uh, their day in court by trying to dismiss the matter. And, and it's very disturbing because the very body that Canada wants workers to turn to, the Canadian Human Rights Commission, that very body is plagued with discrimination. So how do you make that argument? How do you, how do, you do that, right? Uh, so we're in year four now. The delays continue um, with no end in sight. Um, perhaps it will be a conservative government that will uh, give workers their, their day and redress and the right to compensation. The, the government of Canada and the public service have ruined the lives of countless people who have many of whom are women. And this government claims to be a feminist government. And we have women retiring after 30 years, 40 years, in a junior clerical position, their, their pensions, they're on the poverty line, having to use food banks and, you know, so, it's it's really egregious. If you have a question on Zoom, please use the raise hand function. If you have a question on Zoom, please use the raise hand function. Can I just ask, uh, can I just ask, like, so if we go to a B status, does that mean we cannot participate in the in the human, the UN Human Rights Council, is that? That is correct, yes. Okay, and so every country has a seat on this council that is? That has a status rating, okay. is able to participate in that UN mechanism. Okay. So the, uh, it's, it's quite a complicated structure. Um, we have the Global Institute, the Global Alliance for National Human Rights Institution, that does the accreditation process for human rights bodies around the world. And then there is the Gannery Bureau that, uh, um, that consists of other mechanisms that report to the UN out of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, and then the General Assembly. So uh, the General Assembly has set those rules uh, for, for Gannery accreditation. 
uh, in that entire process, and the rights that comes with each status. So the rights that comes with an A status allows for full participation um, in these mechanisms. So a downgrade uh, from A to B would be catastrophic for Canada's participation in the international community. They'd have to sit on the sidelines. In Canada right now, Kirk Long is asking for a seat on the council. What has the seat already? Uh, it has from time to time sought uh, sought that seat. It, it, it does not, but it does get to, the Canadian Human Rights Commission does get to uh, present reports and to speak before uh, the Human Rights Council. If it, if it gets downgraded to a B, it will no longer have that uh, right. To speak at the council. Or vote, uh, correct, yes. Vote. Much more, you have a seat, a correct, seat. Correct, yes. Catherine Morrison, please go ahead. Hi there, thank you all so much for your time today. Um, I am just if you can please share. I know that this is focusing on the Canadian Rights Commission. Are you hoping that it will also so like a call of the discrimination in other government agencies? Are you hoping that the government will take some action there as well? Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, for sure. Um, I'm wondering, I know that this review is focusing on the Human Rights Commission, but I'm wondering if you're also hoping that the government will take action in other departments and agencies where mm -hmm. racism is also present. Thank you for that question. Yes, we are hoping that the government takes decisive action, not just at the Canadian Human Rights Commission, but throughout the the Federal Public Service. This complaint was submitted uh, against the Commission because we believe that it ought to have been a deterrent to the discrimination in the rest of the uh, public service. But in fact, it has discriminated against workers. It has been a perpetrator in the entire um, case of systemic discrimination. So the measures that we've called for, the Black Equity Commission, that is for the entire federal public service. Amendments to the Employment Equity Act, that is for the entire federal public service. And I just want to emphasize on that, because we don't have those amendments right now, the discrimination is continuing. Uh, employers are continuing to enforce the current act, which has black people in the racialized category, and within that uh, definition, there is no breakdown there, and black workers continue to be excluded. So that is a key measure that we're continuing to call for in order to address the disproportionate exclusion of black people in uh, uh, employment opportunities. Thank you. And then um, I guess this is more of just a procedural question, but I know it was mentioned that you know time is running out for the government to make changes ahead of this review. I'm wondering, is there any possibility that the review can be, you know, cancelled or extended if changes are made, or is is it, you know, is that that it will take place, but it's needed for change to happen so that we remain at the A status? So that uh, question falls entirely within the purview um, of uh, the Global Alliance for National Human Rights Institutions and the uh, Office of the Human Rights. Uh, uh, commissioner uh, out of the United Nations, uh, their process, it will happen in, in the fall, and um, they will determine if sufficient has been done. But it's important to note that the review period in question is 2016 to 2022. Did the Canadian Human Rights Commission breach the Paris Principles? which it was required to adhere to in order to meet its, uh, its standing at, uh, in the international community. So that's the critical question that this body will have to answer. And by the government's own admission, they've admitted to rampant discrimination uh, at the Canadian Human Rights Commission. Two state bodies have made these, uh, has, have made these findings. So that is what the government will have to ultimately answer to before the review committee. Merci. This concludes the press conference.
just one little thing. Um, when you look, look at the, the, the board that you put, we see Jordan 2022, there was a review. You see Madagascar 2022, both of those still have an A. What does it mean for your coalition, for the Secretariat, for your initiative, if the GAN uh, HRI comes back and says, no, everything's fine? So, the, the map here sh shows the countries that were previously under review, right? As well as those who are currently under review. Canada and Iraq are currently under review. Um, the special review status means that they have determined that a prima facie case has been established. There's sufficient evidence to re-examine the review that they gave the Commission last year. So when submissions are made, the body will now determine, do we accept this, do we maintain the rating of A, or do we downgrade? If they maintain the rating of A, then we move forward. We would have raised the issue, we would have held Canada to account, and an international body would have adjudicated on that, and, and we would accept and respect uh, the findings of, uh, of that body. But uh, the key issue here, and, and I think what that body may be looking at is what measures Canada has taken, if it's sufficient. Um, it does not dictate, uh, Canada has already said we've discriminated on several occasions, right? So that cannot be changed. So it'll be really up to this body to say if we accept the measures Canada has put in place, if that is sufficient for it to maintain its status. But we maintain from 2016 to 2022, the Canadian Human Rights Commission violated the Paris principles because it was discriminating against workers and rejecting race-based complaints, which is contrary to the Paris principles. That's a fact. Thank you. Thank you. Picture.